Chad Wilson, All Eyes, BB Camp. All right, I am going to talk to you guys today about a coverage that is in my brand new book that I've released called the 7 on 7 Ultimate Defensive Playbook. All right, and I think this is a fun little coverage and a good coverage for the coaches out there that are either coaching the real game on uh, in the fall or you're coaching 7-on-7. Seven seven. Either way, great coverage for you guys to run and for you players out there. It's a good thing for you to learn from, so let's get into it. And it works against a three-by-one set, all right? If you've got a two-by-two two set, and you just want to play a good old regular cover two, that's fine. It's a balanced set. Easy. Play cover two there. Sometimes your cover two can get attacked in ways that it's hard for you to defend when the team goes to a three by one set. So I'm going to give you guys a little adjustment known as two cut. And this allows you to defend a three by one set in a little bit of a different way and throw the offense off a little bit. All right. So let's get our three by one set drawn up right here. All right. I'm going to use an entire offense and not just the seven on seven set. So I put the lineman in there just uh, for you guys out there that are, you know, coaching the real live tackle football games on Friday night, Saturday, Sundays, whatever the case may be. All right, and we're going to draw up our secondary. All right, we're going to put our safety back side right here. Draw the safety out here. We've got our Will. We've got our Mike. And then for a lot of you guys out there, you you know, if you use a traditional 4-3 set, you've got a Sam linebacker. I'm going to just put a star out here because... You know, that's the guy that people are using now. A lot of people go into four, two, five sets. And of course, if you've got a wide open passing attack, we've got a 10 personnel. And for you young guys out there, 10 personnel is no tight ends, right? So if we say 10 personnel, that first number refers to the amount of backs that are in the game. And so that's a running back. And then the second number refers to the amount of tight ends that are in the game. And we don't have any tight ends, so that number is zero. Therefore, it's called 10 personnel if you didn't know what that number means and you've been hearing it, all right? That's what that means. So our 10 personnel is in, you got a lot of fast guys on the field, maybe you wanna take one of those linebackers off. All right, but that's neither here nor there. And what we're talking about is called two cut, all right? So that puts my corner in press right here. So I'm gonna, I typically start from the weak side over to the strong side, but um, in this case here, I'm gonna start on the strong side. So what's two cut mean? That means, we are going to lock this corner up with that widest guy, the number one guy on the offensive formation. And for the young guys out there that don't understand what I mean when I say one, two, and three, when you have a trip set or whatever set that it may be, this widest guy is going to be the number one receiver. He's the close, he's the widest guy towards the sidelines in the set. The next guy in is going to be referred to as two. Next guy in is three. So we've got three guys to the strong side. We count from the outside in one, two, three. Back over here, this guy would be number one. Since the back is over here, this guy is number two. And that's to the weak side of the formation. So that's what I'm referring to. I don't want to keep saying something and you guys don't understand what it is. So we're locking up our corner on the number one guy. And what does that mean? That means he has him everywhere that he goes, okay? You might hear the term Meg used, and that means man everywhere he goes, all right? So we're knocking off a few terms here for you guys um, so you can understand. And in the seven on seven playbook that I have, um, I do put terms in there and explain to you what those terms mean because I know how it is to get into a playbook and you're trying to understand and there are terms being used in there and you don't understand what they mean and it kind of messes you up on everything else. It's, you know, it's like being in Spanish one and you think you know Spanish and you go talking to someone. Um, I'm down here in Miami, you go talk to someone in Hialeah, they start talking, they say a couple of words that you never heard before. Now you don't understand the whole sentence. You don't understand anything they're talking about because you're still focused on that word that you didn't understand. So I get that part of it. All right, so why is it called two cut? Because we've locked this guy up, we have now essentially cut our field down. We have put these two guys in a one-on-one -on -one event. Basically, that corner might get some help depending on the route that that guy runs, but we have cut this whole thing out of there. A lot of times, guys, they don't throw to this 
guy very often, the number one guy out there. If they do, um, they have to bring him back into the formation or they'll run a screen to him, but a lot of times he's cut. So you know what, we'll take our guy and put him up on that guy, and we're gonna just kind of cut that whole thing out. So what do we do with the rest? Here's where the two part comes in, okay? We got the cut part. The cut part is we're cutting that receiver out of the formation with our guy and we're just locking him up. And the two part now is what we're gonna play with the rest of the guys. Let me make sure I draw this guy with his proper alignment. This star or Sam or whoever it is that you put out here is going to be on an outside alignment of number two. It's gonna be on an outside alignment of number two. And what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna play cover two with the rest of the guys here. Against the 10 guys remaining on offense, after we've cut this guy out, we're just gonna play cover two, all right? So our star guy, Sam, whoever our guy is and over the number two, he's outside shade and he's just playing basic cover two rules. He's reading three, feeling two, he's gonna try and get a jam on two, all right? Try to reroute him to get him inside. If he goes outside, he's, he's going to sync with him and we'll talk about some things that you might get there that would be against what would normally happen in cover two, but just know that he's playing cover two rules here, and now he's acting like a corner. He's acting like a, a wide corner in cover two. And now our Mike, who's widened, or whoever your next guy is that you would put right here, he's also playing cover two. So he's going to be a bit of a curl hook player who's also trying to get a reroute on number three as he progresses down the field. Our strong safety is a one half of the field player. He's just playing a normal cover two. Nothing really changes for him here. And that's why I say this corner might get help. If this guy were to go, try to go to the post, if he were trying to go deep, he might get help from that safety, but he's not relying on that. And then another note here, we're playing Meg on this guy. We don't want him coming across the field. So it's almost, it's a bit like a, a two man alignment. All right, we're not really trying to trail though, okay? We're playing an inside alignment, kind of like if you were playing press in cover zero. You don't necessarily want to be trailing that guy. It might happen. You definitely don't want to be two yards or yard be, uh, underneath him like you are in two men, but you are trying to deny an inside release and trying to get this route out here. We want you to play ball with that wide receiver out here in this hallway, okay? Out in that hallway, all the way out there. Let's keep him out there. Let's cut him out of the picture, okay? Back to this side, we, we understood that we're playing cover two here, all right? And then we're gonna play cover two on this side as well. So we're corners playing cover two rules, okay? Trying to get a reroute on one, seeing what two is doing in case he comes out into the flat. Our free safety is a one half of the field player, all right? And where in some cases we would have this guy run the middle of the field, that's not, we're do not what we're doing. He's the next guy inside, so he's playing cover two like this guy's playing, all right? So he's gonna be in the curl. If he this guy were to come out, he would try to get a reroute on him and try to deny him access into this little area right here which is could be a hole for us so he's going to get hands on this guy all right and if he he's on him he's going to carry him but the only thing that would take him off if he got an in call from this cornerback right here okay this cornerback though since there isn't a receiver lined up right here can be a little tighter on anything done by this number one receiver right here so if he were squeezing if he were going in here you could shuffle with him squeeze him a little bit while keeping your eyes on number one on i'm sorry on number two the running back out the backfield because if that guy was trying to come here maybe you would come off on it a little bit but if this guy's going in here then as a corner you can squeeze it down because there are no other threats coming out of here. I hope you guys are following me on that. Okay, since this guy isn't up on the line of scrimmage, as a corner, you can squeeze down a little bit more than you normally would because you don't have a threat of a route coming in to the flat to you right now. However, outside of that, it's normal cover two. So if you had a situation where this guy were to go inside really hard and then this guy comes out into the flat, corner would fall off onto that. He'd call it inside to this wheelbacker and then he would pick it up. If we had a situation where there were two vertical routes, this guy goes here, this guy is railing down the middle of the field, corner would get his reroute on one. Since now this number two guy is straight down the field, you sink back with this and you help your free safety out and don't stress him out. Wheelbacker would come over, try and get a jam on this guy, 
stay up underneath him and carry him for as long as we could there, all right? What are the holes in this? Obviously, a guy comes into this area right here, you have an issue there, but you know in coverage, you can't cover everything. All right, so let's come back over to this side real quick. Since we've got, we're playing cover two on the number two and number three receiver, there's always a chance that this guy might go run himself into the flat. If he does, you gotta just widen and go with him because you own that guy, okay? As the now corner, that's, you're basically playing corner now in this cover two, if that guy goes outside there, you gotta own him, all right? Um, your Mike, who is uh, reading two and feeling three, if this guy were to come and stretch out here while number two is also out there, you see that two is out and three is out, you've gotta go widen yourself a little bit. That's when you would go from hook over to the curl, widen and force that throw out there. One last thing, if either two or three were to go into the flat and then turn up the field, this guy, our star, owns him, all right? You have two through the zone. You should know that in cover two. So if any of these guys were to come out here, so let's say we got a vertical uh, route from number two, the Y, and then H went out here into the flat, our star would own him. You own him now, so if he turns up the field, you are also running with that guy, all right? In a nutshell though, and we have a condensed field that we're working with now and that, all right? And that's two cut. I've got a bunch of coverages in my seven on seven ultimate defensive playbook. This is just one of them. Got a couple of others in there that you may not have seen before that are really, really good in a seven on seven situation, as well as in a live full tackle football game situation. Put your little tweaks to it. But I would advise all of you guys, both players as well as coaches to pick up a copy of that book i'll have a link to it in the description down below excellent for you even as a young player i have a very nice detailed explanations on what everyone's doing in the coverages and i'm talking about some of the basic ones too like two three cover four cover six cover eight and then i've got a couple of nice little goodies that i throw in there as well that you guys can take and run with but it's an excellent book for guys that are playing in the secondary or a linebacker or anyone playing on defense a great way for you to learn pick up some things and then like i said i've got some nice goodies in there so link to it down in the description appreciate you guys spending your time to watch this right here i hope you have some hints from it as well as you guys can drop some comments down below you can ask your questions there you can um, give me some feedback on this and uh, enjoy it from there all right guys that's my time all eyes db camp consistency breeds results